elections in Venezuela postponed. And in sport, Jamaicans secure spots in the 400-meter men's and women's semifinal at the IWF World Indoor Championships. I'm Nicole Best. And this is the Caribbean in 10 for Friday, March 2nd. I'll be back with the details after the break. First, um, you should know that uh, I am the co-chair of the Democratic Attorney General's Association. Um, that association has really redoubled its efforts in light of uh, many of the Trump's policies. And our goal in bringing suit against the president is to invoke the necessary check and balance. I formerly worked in a White House, in the Clinton White House. Uh, and I'm asking, you know, will anything change? Will, will this, you know, these, these public lynchings stop? We're on a collision course. And what happened in Ferguson, what happened in Baltimore, is going to happen again and again. Because Ferguson and Baltimore were the first. The conditions that cause black people to come into contact, you talk about capitalism and, and, and so forth. Presidential election, that's presidential candidates in Venezuela have agreed to delay elections that had been scheduled for April 22nd following the signing of an agreement to respect election results. The new date set for the polls is Sunday, May 20th. The announcement has been welcomed by President Nicolas Maduro, who posted on Facebook that democracy and the political rights of voters could only be guaranteed by way of the ballot. He says he wants to go through a process of reconciliation with all Venezuelans. Campaign manager for President Maduro, Jorge Rodriguez, as well as Luis Romero, the manager for one of the country's opposition leaders, Henry Falcon, were among those who signed the agreement. Rodriguez, who is Maduro's communications minister, told Reuters on Thursday that signing was testimony to the spirit of reconciliation that undercuts foreign criticism of autocratic rule in Venezuela. Romero, who leads Falcon's party, says the only way to bring about change is through the ballot and not through protests which marred the country for the last two years and cost the lives of over 130 people. Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley says the opposition is playing political cricket with anti-gang legislation and he has had enough of it. He said the sunset clause is being called for by the United National Congress are just excuses to delay passage of what he calls a very good bill. Rowley says he will put the country before politics and bend to the opposition's demands. You know what they've said in Debe that we don't need the law. See the two and a half years that they're offering now. You know what that means? In two and a half years, the parliament will be dissolved. And there will be no parliament to extend this law if we allow it to fall flat, fall, come, fall due in two and a half years. When the parliament is prorogued, dissolved, who is going to be there to extend it? So it dies. And if that happens, a lot of work being done by the police with respect to gangs, what's going to happen to Staying in Port of Spain, Marlene MacDonald is back in Prime Minister Rowley's cabinet. She was sworn in by President Anthony Camona as minister in the Ministry of Public Administration and Communication on Thursday afternoon. Now, this is the third time that MacDonald has been sworn in as a government minister since the People's National Movement took office in 2015. We get more in this report from CNews. This is the third time that the Port of Spain South MP has been sworn in as minister since the PNM took up office in 2015. She was first appointed the Minister of Housing but had been removed in March 2016 after becoming the subject of an investigation. The following year, Ms. MacDonald was appointed Minister of Public Utilities from June 30, 2017, a position she held for just a day. Dr. Rowley advised the President Thursday to appoint her as a Minister in the Ministry of Public Administration and Communications, where she will assist the Prime Minister, who continues to hold the portfolio which he assumed since the substantive Minister Maxi Cuffey fell ill in September 2017. In making the appointment, the Prime Minister said Ms. MacDonald could make a valuable contribution to the Ministry and he was confident that she would meritoriously perform the duties required as a Minister in the Ministry. 
Ms. MacDonald, in accepting the appointment, pledged to dedicate herself to the business of the ministry and said she was committed and motivated to perform. From 2010 to 2015, she served in opposition as the chief whip. The Haitian government says it is moving expeditiously to deal with the situation confronting teachers, even as it said it was deeply alarmed by demonstrations being staged by students at the instigation of teachers and or trade unionists in several cities in the French-speaking Caribbean country. Prime Minister Jacques Lafontaine, uh, National Education Minister Pierre Cadet, and Minister for Economy Jude Salomon answered questions from members of the Senate Committee on the regularization of teachers and payment of salary arrears. Both Lafontaine and Cadet said the entire state apparatus has been mobilized to provide a speedy response to the problems of teachers' regularization in the classroom without a letter of appointment as well as the payment of arrears of wages. Lafontaine confirmed that he had given instructions that measures be taken as soon as possible to satisfy the teachers of staff, uh, the, the teaching staff of public institutions. Stay with us. Your midday sport is next. <laughs> Several of Jamaica's male and female athletes advanced to the semi-finals of various events after performing commendably on the first full day of competition at the IAAF World Indoor Championships in Birmingham, that's in the United Kingdom, and that took place earlier today. Double Olympic gold medalist Elaine Thompson, along with Ramona Burchell and Gayon Evans, all secured their spots in the semi-finals of the women's 60-meter event. Thompson finished second in Heat 2 in 7.20 seconds. The event was won by Maria Jose in 7.17 seconds. The 25-year-old Thompson, who has a season's best time of 7.12 seconds, had a good start before shutting it down five meters from the line where she was passed by Talou. Uh, Burchell is the fastest Jamaican qualifier. She finished second in Heat 6 in 7.19 seconds. Evans secured her place after finishing third in Heat 4 in 7.33. Three. Meantime, Stephanie Ann McPherson and debutante that's Tovia Jenkins advanced after winning their first round heats in the women's 400 meter. McPherson ran a season's best 52.18 seconds, finishing second fastest of the round to win her heat after overtaking Ireland's Phil Healy, who led after 200 meters on the home stretch. Jenkins had a easier passage as she won her heat in 53.39 seconds, well off her personal best of 52.12 seconds set almost a month ago. And meantime, Javon Francis produced a string run at the end to secure his spot in the semifinals of the men's 400 meters. Of course, we're going to give you more on that and other sports stories at 6.30 this evening. But until then, do have yourselves a good afternoon.